former President Donald Trump fighting back and taking his case against Joe Biden's Department of Justice to court. Trump is calling for an independent special master to review documents seized during the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago earlier this month. All right, former senior Trump advisor Jared Kushner is the author of a brand new book called Breaking History. It's excellent. We'll get into detail on it in a moment. Jared, welcome to the couch. Thank you. First very much. appearance. Um, you. And first off, your reaction two weeks ago when you heard about the raid and your reaction to the president's legal maneuver yesterday. Thank you. Well, I, I was just as shocked as most people were. Uh, you know, if you read in the book, I, I talk about how we went to Washington. We were going to try to, you know, implement policies on trade and on cutting taxes and on trying to solve some of the wars and create peace, which we ended up doing. And I, I write about that. But, uh, but it, the relentless attack against Trump really started during the campaign. I mean, the FBI uh, was spying on his campaign, and then you know we spent two years having to disprove that we were colluding with Russia. And then after we finally proved that we were, you know, clear on that one, then they tried to impeach him over trying to. Uh, investigate corruption in Ukraine. And so, unfortunately, we, we've lost a lot of faith in, in the fairness of the judicial system. And it seems like they keep trying to find more and more things to go after Trump on. And so he was a businessman. He was a great businessman. He wasn't a career politician beforehand. And, uh, and it just seems like what they keep doing is breaking norms in their attempt to try to get him. Yeah, Jared, the, the appointment of, or the, the request for the appointment for the special master is clearly a way to try and gain credibility back to the process because DOJ can't be trusted just given the pattern of behavior starting in 2015, 2016 with the first election, going through uh, the special counsel investigation and on and on and on, which you're very familiar with. Um, so how do you see this moving forward given we're waiting for the affidavit, possibly Possible redactions coming on Thursday. Can anybody really trust the process here? I think transparency will be the friend of the process. And, you know, one of the, the things I find very funny is a big issue that I, I championed that President Trump was able to get done was criminal justice reform. And uh, what's happening now is a lot of uh, the people on the hard right who are against it are now saying, wait, there are overzealous prosecutors who are too powerful. And then people on the left who are always calling for fairness are now saying the prosecution should go uh, with no holds bar. So I guess, you know, I think on my third day in Washington, I learned that hypocrisy was something that you can't really be bothered by, but it seems to, you know, be in, in high high degree right now. I think you learned that on the first day. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Okay, so he's asking for a special master and asking for them to stop going through the stuff as they may be right now. Uh, the New York Times has got the item today from Maggie Haberman and some of the other reporters that apparently there were 300 classified documents at Mar-a-Lago over the last year or so, and they, you know, they think they've gotten them all by now. Why would the former president have that many classified things at Mar-a-Lago? So, so I'm not familiar with what exactly the contents were, and but what I'll just say from my personal experience is that, uh, again, in the campaign, in the transition, we had a, a right. very innocent meeting with uh, the Russian ambassador, and then you know. Four months later, you're reading that the intel agencies are leaking to the Washington Post that we requested this secret back channel. And then the New York Times and right. CNN go crazy for a weekend accusing us of treason. And then it turns out such a thing never really happened. And so, you know, I, I just think you have to be very careful with what you read and obviously just wait for the facts to develop. But, I mean, there's been so many things that have been hyperventilated about over the last years that turn out to be nothing. And that, that's, again, why I wrote this book, was I wanted people to really understand what it was like to be living through that when you know you've done nothing wrong, you're there trying to get good things done, and, you know, people are out there, you know, accusing you of all these crazy things, and you have to prove that those things didn't happen. Right, and you know they didn't, and it almost took you down, and knowing that you were innocent, you gave all your time in all those interviews, and still had to wonder if the process would work. I gotta bring it to the, uh, the way you guys ended, it was in the middle of the pandemic, and the guy that was front and center is Anthony Fauci. He is now gonna be leaving after 50 plus years, and I'm wondering, do you look at him as a profit or a problem? <laughs> well, that's uh, those are two different definitions. I, I think that it's very good after 50 years that you get fresh blood. I think that what we saw during the pandemic is that there were a lot of gaps operationally in the system. It was not designed. You have a lot of professors who are very good at writing papers or giving out grants, but their ability to actually operationalize in real form uh, was really uh, quite lacking. And so we brought in a lot of people from the private sector uh, and a lot of people from the military Did to he really help. that? Um, I think that you had a lot of people Try, in Washington, people try very hard to uh, say that they're not wrong instead of actually getting things done. And we, we didn't really have time to worry about who was wrong or right. We were just trying to get things done to save lives. Right. And 
And, and, and you know what? Part of that was the business experience that you and the former president brought to the executive branch. I know people who were involved in Operation Warp Speed who worked with you, and they said, you know, ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to move faster than the federal government works because Fauci and company and everybody else moves, you know, historically very slowly the, where the you, were trying to, you were trying to go at warp speed. Yeah, well, they, they all said it can never be done. And, and President Trump, you know, would always set uh, unrealistic goals and everyone would criticize that. And then we would go and we'd bulldoze through things and we'd get it done. And uh, again, I think I write about this in, in the book about how uh, over four years, this was at the end of, of the four years, uh, I'd learned so many lessons, you know, some from mistakes, some from uh, some from, you know, things that went well and some from watching others mm -hmm. that allowed us to set up Operation Warp Speed in a way that gave it the best chance right. of success. Yeah, and Jared, we picked, oh. Sorry, Jerry, one of your, uh, your big accomplishments in the Middle East is obviously the Abraham Accords, but you know, the Trump administration left the Iran nuclear agreement. This administration is trying to get back into it. They say they're two weeks away from doing that. They said that six months ago. Um, talk about where, where they are with that and the dangers it poses to the region that you were able to stabilize through trade and business. Yeah, so it's not too late for them to reverse course. I, I don't think they will. They've been, you know, playing the hand as weak as possible. When President Trump came in in 2016, uh, we inherited an awful hand in the Middle East. Right. You know, Iran was was flush with cash. Syria was in a civil war. Uh, all of our allies were betrayed. ISIS took, running rampant. Uh, ISIS had a caliphate the size of Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, over three and a half years, we basically reversed the whole course and then got our first peace deal in the Abraham Accords. Again, they got the next peace deal, the next peace deal. In the last six months, we had six peace deals. And so the, the, the obvious thing to do would be to say, this is working after 20 years of failed policy in the Middle East. Again, everyone mocked the approach we took, but we were outsiders. We took a fresh approach and we achieved results. And again, I, I go through you know, how we did this because this was very, very complicated stuff. But the obvious thing to do was they had a great hand, keep playing the hand, keep following the policy. But instead, they basically did a complete 180 and went back to the old policy with Iran that didn't work. And so I think it's a recipe for failure if they make the deal. Uh, I think the, the, the strength of, of what Trump did in the Middle East is so strong that it can endure uh, hopefully despite it, but I, I think it's very, very misguided, well, and I hope uh, they don't do it. It's you, not just, you yeah. know, bad policy. It's dangerous for the world, and not just for the Middle East, but for the United States of America, given yeah. the way they're they dealing were, with Iran now. They were cheating. You caught them. Netanyahu exposed it. They still had the nuclear program. They're using their money to, to foment terror in the region, and now they're going to go back to it, it seems. But stick around. We want to break down what's inside your book. We are going to take a, a quick time out, and on the other side, we're going to ask you, if your father-in-law is going to run for president again. <laughs> I'm sure just telling you. So think before. of an answer. I think you already know the answer. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.